Hi, I'm Liz Simmons from Channel PSCP News. Our feature story today concerns pesticide safety issues in greenhouses. I spoke with Harry Granger, owner of Granger's Greenhouses, about how he addresses pesticide safety in his business. Thank you for having us, Harry. My pleasure, Liz. Well, tell me a little bit about your business. Well, we grow tomatoes, cucumbers, and other vegetables to sell at farmer's markets. Oh, I go there every summer. Well, as you're growing your produce, how do you manage pests? We use an integrated pest management approach, which means we use a variety of methods to control pests. This includes non-chemical applications, such as pulling weeds and other more mechanical controls. We also watch how much we water the plants. And in some cases, when necessary, we use low toxicity pesticides. So, when you have to apply pesticides, how do you keep safe? Well, I employ both workers and handlers. Handlers do the actual pesticide application, and while workers don't do the application, they may come in direct contact with the exposed crop, like during harvest season. Both parties need to know about pesticide safety and it is my responsibility to make sure that I educate them and that I'm in compliance with the Worker Protection Standard, or WPS. So what is WPS? WPS is a federal regulation designed to protect workers and handlers, and it actually consists of three components. There's employee training, application notification, and also personal protective equipment requirements. You know, in past shows, I've spoken with representatives from OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration. And it seems like WPS and OSHA are very similar in the sense that employers have a responsibility to provide a safe working environment for his or her employees. That's exactly right. And in my case, I need to provide a workplace where people are safe from excessive pesticide exposure. I also need to inform them about pesticide exposure, protections against it, and ways to reduce it. So what's involved? Well, why don't we go to my main office and I can show you. Then we can take a look at the greenhouses. Sounds good. Okay. My first responsibility is to provide information to workers and handlers. My greenhouse operation has a central location where workers come every day and sign in. This is also where I post important announcements and other important information like what pesticides are being used in the greenhouses and at what times they're being applied. This is also where I keep my required WPS poster. This poster must state that there are federal rules to protect workers, including a requirement for safety training. It also gives instruction on how workers can prevent pesticides from getting on or into their bodies. That's right. It's all about reducing risk. Is there any other safety instructions that need to be posted? Yes, I also post emergency information, like the name, number, and address of the nearest medical facility. And along with that, we also post a list of what applications are currently underway and what time those are going to occur. This includes the location and the area that is being treated, as well as the product name, EPA registration number, and active ingredients, and the time that it was applied. Also, it includes the re-entry interval, or REI. What is an REI? It's the restricted entry interval, and it's the amount of time after applying a pesticide that people must wait before entering a treated area. It also differs on what product is being used. That makes sense. So all the information you mentioned, when does that get displayed? Generally before the application occurs, and usually until 30 days after the REI expires or the application is complete. I need to make sure all my employees are aware of where the information is located and give updates as necessary. In addition to the written posters and the labels, I also tell them verbally. Great. Seems smart to be on the safe side. Now, earlier you mentioned safety training. What does that involve? Well, I employ both workers and handlers, so I'm responsible for training both on basic pesticide safety. Workers and handlers need to be trained every five years and when possible, reduced to fewer years in the future. Now, if you come to me from a previous employer and have 
your required training completed, as long as it took place in the last five years, I may not need to train you. Is the training different from handlers and workers? Yes, in fact, the WPS actually has two different trainings for both types. I myself am a certified applicator, so I can do the training myself. Any specific things you need to consider when doing training? Well, I do use written and audiovisual material, as well as just tell them verbally what I'm training them on. It's important that I convey the information clearly so that my workers know what to expect and also that I answer their questions. So, we've discussed posting safety information and doing safety training. What about when you're actually on site? Well, under WPS, it's my responsibility to be prepared for potential problem situations. There are certain decontamination supplies that I must include for workers and handlers on site. These provide an immediate response if someone is exposed to pesticides while working. What type of supplies? Well, I need to make sure that there is plenty of clean water on site. Now, as an employer, I need to provide one gallon of water for workers when they're out in the field for washing their hands. Also, for the handlers, I need to provide three gallons of water, not just for hand washing, but for overall body cleansing if they need to. Now, soap and single-use towels should also be made available. And if employees are in a situation where he or she needs to wear protective clothing, such as a handler, the employee also needs to be provided with a clean set of coveralls. Is eye protection also a concern? It can be. If the product requires eye protection to be worn, the additional water must also be provided for eye washing. The eye washing water should be immediately available, so it can be carried on site with a person or at a distance where it can be grabbed within seconds. What about the rest of the supplies? Where on site should they be located? On site, they should be no more than a quarter mile away from where the work is being done. Now, if you're a worker, you can't have any uh, supplies or water in areas that have been treated. However, if you're a handler, you can have the water and supplies with you as long as you use proper PPE when doing the task and then also put them in a container that is PPE clean before taking them out of the contaminated area. Supplies such as water, soap, towels must be located away from areas where pesticides have recently been applied. And then the supplies such as coveralls, they can be kept in the containment site, but also they need to be in an enclosed container. Each handler should have at least a pint of clean water immediately av available for eye washing. Pesticide mixing sites should also have these same supplies. What responsibilities do you have in an emergency? Say someone gets ill from an exposure to a pesticide. Well, obviously we hope that emergencies don't occur. But in the event that they do, as a good employer and a good citizen, I will help my workers and handlers. Under WPS, it is my responsibility to have transportation available in the event that someone is injured or becomes ill based on the exposure to the pesticide. I also need to keep a list of the product labels that are being used and also the treatment areas where they could have been affected. This information is kept at our central location in order so I can grab it before we go to the hospital if someone does become ill. Harry also said that an important part of emergency planning is contacting medical personnel right away. With us here is emergency room doctor Lydia Meir, who has personally been involved with pesticide poisoning cases. Welcome, Dr. Meir. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. Well, tell us what's involved with the pesticide poisoning case. Well, my experience has been that the individuals who bring the victim in usually are able to provide us with information that we really need to quickly diagnose and treat the problem. So what type of information is most useful? Well, our first priority is to keep everyone safe from the potential of further um, exposure, including the ER staff and the victim. And in pesticide poisoning cases, we do have specific questions that we ask. We need to know the name of the pesticide active ingredient, when the victim was exposed, and how much chemical they were exposed to, and also the decontamination and treatment guidelines that the pesticide label indicates. 
In addition, having the product label is very helpful because it gives us the name of the pesticide, the EPA registration number, and the first aid information. And all of that information makes our job a lot easier in treating the patient. So who usually brings this information to you? Usually it's a boss or a coworker who brings them in. So if someone becomes ill due to a pesticide um, exposure, can a coworker or an employer um, administer some first aid procedures before they reach the hospital? Certainly they can. The pesticide label specifies requirements for first aid. And it's been my experience, and I've been very impressed with the individuals who seem very knowledgeable and able to assist someone who's been exposed to pesticides, and they're able to act quickly in those emergencies. Harry has things well in place to address pesticide exposure <laughs> emergencies, but I was curious about strategies for preventing them. So let's go back to Granger's Greenhouses, where we'll join Harry and one of his pesticide handler employees at the greenhouse entrance. Harry, what can you tell us about preventing pesticide exposure in the first place? Well, although we're equipped to handle problems if they do arise, I believe it's best to keep employees from harm in the first place. So we do this by not allowing employees to enter treated areas until the REI has expired. And in some cases, when early entry is required for limited contact tasks, we require that they wear po proper personal protective equipment. This allows them to enter other areas for limited amounts of time with limited contact. Stan, what about handlers like yourself? Well, Liz, since we're the ones applying the pesticides, we're required to wear all the personal protective equipment, or PPE, listed on the label. Due to the closed space environment and ventilation considerations in a greenhouse, this often includes wearing a respirator. In addition, we have to know and understand the label for the products we'll be using. So is this part of the training that Harry provides? Yes, Harry provides us with all the training, PPE, and any other information that we need to safely do our jobs. I also make sure I'm handling the pesticides in a way that won't expose the workers or other people. Good for you. Thanks, it's my job. <laughs> also, as an applicator, I'm personally responsible for making sure I follow all the label directions on posting the treatment area. This sometimes includes individual signs on plant benches or greenhouse doors. Great. Well, listen, you mentioned ventilation. I can see where that would be specific to greenhouses and pose some unique challenges. Are there rules about that? There are. In general, only the handlers are allowed in the greenhouse treatment area during pesticide applications and during the REI with proper PPE to do the job until the greenhouse has been properly ventilated. Usually this depends on the kind of pesticides that we're using and also whether the ventilation is passive ventilation or using fans. Is there anything else our viewers should know? Well, through the WPS, it's my responsibility not only to notify employees, but also other individuals that will be working in the treated area, like temporary employees, utility workers, etc. You're very thorough, Harry. I can tell you do a great business here. Thank you to you and Stan for visiting us today. My pleasure. You're welcome. For more information about WPS notification procedures, PPE, and other pesticide safety topics, visit the YouTube channel for the PSEP program at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. This is Liz Simmons. Thank you for joining us at Channel PSEP News.